In this video, I'm going to give you three essential tips for painting still life shadows. So my first tip for still life shadows is to use opposite colors to make your shadow colors. So when you add shadow to an object, it shouldn't just be some random color. Sometimes it's enough just to go a little bit darker with the shade of whatever you're using, yellow or orange, just go a little bit thicker with the paint to get a little dark area. That can be enough, especially on delicate things like fruit and flowers. But sometimes you do need a stronger shadow and it's a good idea to use an opposite color, preferably one you've already used in your painting. Now, there's only three sets of opposite colors. Those are orange and blue, yellow and purple, and green and red. I'll put them in the description of this video in case you forget them. So I've drawn a little fruit here. Maybe it's an apricot or satsuma. It doesn't really matter what it is for the purposes of this demonstration. So I'm going to put some of this soft orange color on. And I'm going to add a little bit of shadow to it. So the opposite of orange is blue. So I'm going to use a little bit of blue and that will just neutralize as it hits this orange color and you'll just get sort of a slightly duller, slightly darker version. Now, of course, when using strong colors like blue and purple, you have to be a little bit careful not to put too much of them on. And I would always test these out on a scrap of paper first because they can have unexpected effects. If you're not very good at color mixing, if you don't feel that you fully understand it, you can end up with some strange effects. For instance, depending how much this blue tends towards the yellow or the red end of the spectrum will depend on the color that you get. You may end up with a sort of grayish orange here, or you could end up with a greenish shade. So in order not to get any unexpected results, it's always a good idea to try it out first. But I hope you can see just how natural this looks. Now you'll notice that when I put that second color on, it wasn't drippy and wet, it was quite dry. And this will help you to control the paint and stop it from spreading everywhere. So when it comes to adding shadow to bright objects, you want to consider using your opposite colors. It's going to give you a really natural look. If you're enjoying this tips video so far, can I ask you quickly just to do me a favor and click that thumbs up, that like button, please. If you can like, share, subscribe, or leave me a comment, it helps to push my channel out to more people. I can teach more people like you how to paint and draw. And I'm super grateful to all of you who watch me on YouTube. Let's get on with tip number two. So we're looking down at a still life that I'm in the middle of painting now. And my next tip for you is to mix your own greys rather than use a ready-made grey. Worse still, a grey that you haven't used anywhere else in the painting. Now, in this painting, I have actually used a little bit of Payne's Grey for darkness, but I've also used three other colours, those being primary colours, a blue, a yellow, a pink, which works for red in this case. And I can make myself a grey from those colours. Now, when you're putting a shadow on a white surface like this, in other words, you're not painting a background, those shadows are always going to be cool. If you're putting a shadow on an orange tablecloth for example it would be a darker shade of orange but when you have a white surface like this whether it's because you're doing a still life with no background or perhaps you're painting a white house with shadows in those shadows are always going to be cool on that white surface they might tend towards just a pure gray they may be a sort of a blue gray or a lilac gray but you always want to stay in that cool area and you can always mix them from three primaries that you have already used in your painting now i have two areas of shadow here I have this one over here. If you look at the original photograph, that's quite a complicated shadow. And we have this simple flat hard edge shadow here with one or two little marks in here that I'll just lift out with a damp brush. But I'm going to start by mixing my shadow color. The blue that I've used in this painting is cerulean. It's quite a weak granular color. I've got myself a little pot here. I'm going to start with the blue. Gray is majority blue pigment, so you want to start with the blue. I want this to be a lilac gray, so I'm gonna add the pink next in small amounts because pinks tend to be strong. And then I'm going to add a little bit of yellow and that'll just give that third primary, that'll push it towards the gray. So I've started out with quite a lot of cerulean and I have poured some water in there. I need to make sure I have enough of this color to do both of the shadows in my painting. Now I'm adding little bits of pink paint. I'm just going from the corner of my palette here because I know that paint is clean. I'm mixing with this old acrylic brush because it stops me from messing up my nice watercolor brushes. So we can see it's turning quite lilac now. So I'm going to clean my brush and add a little bit of yellow. 
and here it goes. If the mix at this point turns green, then I'll know that I need to add more pink. It's looking a bit too blue at the moment. I think it needs more pink, but I'm gonna try it out first of all on a scrap of paper. Yeah, as I suspected, it's too blue, so I need more pink and possibly a bit more yellow as well. So I've mixed my color and I'm happy with it. This shadow has hard edges, so I'm going to apply it to dry paper. Now I'm gonna keep stirring because this has got cerulean in. It has large granulating pigments and they will sink to the bottom and change the color if I don't stir while I apply. So that's what I'll be doing. And the reason it's so important to mix this shadow color from three primaries that you're already using is because it will add a great amount of harmony to your painting. So I'm just going to come down at the bottom here and just start applying. I instantly feel that I need a smaller brush, so let's change. And to get that smooth, even application, I'll just go from one side up to the other. You don't want to come back at any point. I'm just going to make sure that I'm close enough to this edge here. But what you don't want to do is get up to the top here and then start going back and correcting this part down here once it's started to dry because what will happen is you'll be introducing wet paint into a damp area and that is a sure way of getting back runs and drying lines. And I'm just going to keep applying this harmonious shadow color until I get right up to the top. So for my third tip, we're gonna go back to our little piece of fruit. I'm gonna show you how to do a soft edged shadow. Now the shadows in the last picture that you saw, and incidentally, if you want that full tutorial, it is available on Patreon, and it may be released in the future as a mini course as well, so look out for that one. But in that last painting, we had very hard edged shadows, and you only really get those in very strong sunlight. So you might get them on a very, very sunny day where there's no clouds in the sky on a building. But generally speaking, it's best to do default to a soft shadow and if you're doing a still life if you're a beginner I would default to doing soft shadows you have to be very accurate with hard edged shadows so unless you're certain of where you're painting go for a soft edge shadow they always look nice so I've drawn a shadow area here now with the caveat that if you're doing your own drawing like this I would advise you to draw very very lightly around shadow areas perhaps draw further out than where the paint is going to be or don't draw at all because you don't want a hard edge stuck under a soft edge shadow. I've only put one here so that you can see on camera where I'm working. So bear that in mind. What we're going to do is we're gonna start by wetting this shadow area. I'm going to take the water out significantly further than the edge of where the shadow will be, which is where the pencil line is. And I'm not going to take the water right up to the edge of the fruit. I'm just gonna stop about a millimeter before it. And the reason for that is that the paint will follow the water and it's hard to see where you're going with water. So we're going to take this water, we're gonna have it further out, quite a bit further out, otherwise you'll just come off the edge of the water. As soon as you come off the edge of the water, you're gonna be back to a hard edge again. Of course, you could manipulate this so you've got a hard and soft edge shadow. You sometimes get those. For this, I'll just show you how to do a soft edge shadow. At this point, make sure your paper is wet and that the water is clean. And make sure there are no puddles, so it should be wet but not puddling. Now I'm going to get my shadow color. I'll use the one that I used previously, just for speed and to give it a mix. Make sure my brush isn't too drippy wet. And then I'm going to go in right next to the fruit. And because I'm using paint now, I can see, I can go right up to the edge of that fruit because I can see where I'm going. Now, if the paint comes out like it is at the moment with this very sort of feathery edge, of course you can use that if you like it, but it's also a sign that the paint is a little bit too wet sometimes. So what we'll do is I'll go back to my other brush because it's wider. I'm going to just dry it slightly and then I can just sweep along the edge here with that damp brush and just manipulate this paint a little bit just to make sure that there's no puddling and to stop it from spreading too far out. You can, as you can see, actually pick up a little bit of that color and add some detail if you want. It'll dry a little bit lighter. If you find that once it's dried, it's disappointing, it's not as dark as you wanted, simply repeat the entire process again, making sure that you add the water from the outside in so that you don't pick up any of the previous color and spread it out. And then you just repeat the exact same process and add another layer of color. 
Thank you so much for joining me on this three essential tips video. If you enjoyed this video, please do consider subscribing to my channel. It's completely free and you'll get notified every time I have a new video for you if you click that bell icon. Before you leave this video, don't forget to pop into the video description. I've got all sorts of free downloadables for you there. There's even a free course you can take and you can watch another one of my videos right now.